read this already? Okay. <laughs> mm. uh, what we have before us is a rezoning request and uh, to the R4 district. Um, as you can see on the map here, this area to the north and to the east has already been zoned R4. For those of you that have been on the commission a while, uh, you may remember when, oh, good grief, this isn't working. Let's try it again. Let's see if I can. What happens is when I'm pointing at the screen, where the ink shows up is nowhere near where I'm pointing, so it's kind of a guess thing. And then it chooses not to work. So, <laughs> anyway, I think I'm going back to the overhead after this week <laughs> because this happens every meeting. Um, the R4 district was a, a development called Anchor Park Villas, and uh, that they had received preliminary plat approval. And at the time, the area that's highlighted in orange and the little area to the north, where there is an existing single family house, as you can see um, on the aerial photograph here that um, they did not own and they were working with the property owners with regards because with regards to purchasing it um, the reason that they wanted to purchase it is because they were building a road up to the top of the hill and it was only going to be a single loaded road uh, meaning that there was just going to be um, condos on the right hand side uh, they have since acquired this land and so they are requesting to rezone it to R4 so that they can incorporate it into the Anchor Park Villas development. Now all the approvals for the Anchor Park Villas have expired so they will be coming back actually next month with the concept plan approval uh, for this but this is part of their proposed area um, that will be part of the development so that the road is actually a double loaded, meaning that you have houses on both sides of the road. So this is a very logical next step um, since they have acquired the right of way, I mean have acquired the property. This property is located directly across the road from Anchor Park. Um, Turkey Creek Road is classified as a, as a major collector. Uh, so in essence what you what you have is a major recreational facility that is adjacent to um, the property. You have a road that has already been improved. Uh, as you are aware, the walking trails um, are located directly in front of this property. And then also immediately, as you're looking at the screen to your right, uh, the walking trail goes up the full length of the property so the recreational amenities are there and so this is ideal for a higher density type residential development and um, I included in your packet a staff write-up uh, with regards to this and uh, this area does uh, meet the minimum requirements within the R R4 district in that uh, it is free of free from severe natural environmental limitations and provides access to a street designated having a designated classification of local collector or greater uh, and the street does meet the minimum requirements established in the subdivision regulations um, staff does um, you know we have met with Chris Sharp on this and the developer and talked about it um, and oh, now it shows up uh, TJ develop well is it TJ or is it just J <laughs> it's what TJ so okay. it is still TJ developments Victor Jernigan was partners with that but he is no longer part of that mm Uh, they're bringing the concept plan in at the next planning commission meeting. Yes, it is. Um, when you have a rezoning such as this, uh, we want to make sure that residents do have ample opportunity to participate. I have not received any phone calls about this. We do have the property posted for, you know, with our sign. Um, this is actually really a, a really good location for condos because of the proximity to the park, the walking trails, the lake, uh, 
um, all the amenities that we have in this area. Uh, I don't know if Chris has anything to add or not. <laughs> Chris Sharp, uh, Urban Engineering, uh, just down the road. Um, the new, I guess I'm the recently hired engineer for uh, for the project. I don't really have. I think Ruth pretty well has explained. How how uh, many days or uh, again do you have to post or about you know the, the in that area? Or does that make sense? What well, I'm we just posted the property, and we post it right before the agenda shows up in the newspaper. Okay, right. that's weird. I wasn't touching <laughs> anything. <laughs> that's a big pool. <laughs> that's and that does not the represent the sinkhole. Pool, okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, the uh, nice track, right? basically what we do is we will, we send postcards to adjacent properties. In this particular case. Uh, there really wasn't hardly anybody to send postcards to right. <laughs> because the property, um, they own most of it, and then the people who sold it are the ones who. Uh, but we did post it, and we post it right before it's in the newspaper so folks know to look at the newspaper. And that's usually what generates the phone okay. calls is when they get postcards or when they <laughs> see the sign posted. And I have not gotten any phone Anything? calls. So that's <laughs> kind of, and I don't know where that came from. The ballpark kind of number change in number of units and or density that are going I think from the R1 to R1. 15 more units uh, on that? 15? No, maybe not quite that many. I've, I've paid more attention to the front phase. And actually the density goes down because we're, I don't know if I need to talk about tonight, but. Yeah, there, there if, for those of you that were on when the, the, the villas were approved the first time around, the, the number of units per building was fairly large. Uh, they, Chris has cut that back substantially to mostly duplexes. Uh, folks have found that nobody wants to buy the interior units because they want some exterior windows and things like that. And so um, that's actually reduced the density just because they R4 have. R4, it's going to be even less. Huh? Pardon? So even though it's R4, it's going to be less density. Overall, okay. yeah. <laughs> they had they had bigger buildings before, and you've got 12 mm -hmm. feet of separation per building, so we've got you know obviously more spacing and less density. I'll say that this is again one of those that I consider to be a no-brainer. Well, until pond? someone shows up next month. I don't is that is that our pond in the back of the property? Is that what? Yeah, apparently, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Some magic happens with this thing. I, I'm pretty much going back to the overhead after this. This is the third meeting in a row that it this is. thing has a mind of its own, and I'm. Find that you need to do a water feature there. Or something else. <laughs> he does have a detention basin back up in that's that a, corner. So that's so the water flows up in uh, the pump people station. Still own the big white house that's behind that property. Is that I'm sorry? So, the big white house that's behind that property that still belongs to the same people. Yes, that, ma'am. That hasn't been sold. The or Smith. The has. Smith residence. Yes, they bought it's the. Smith. I'm sorry. Well, the uh, the Smiths originally they still own the big piece that's zoned R1 with with the right. R1. Right labels on is that the one you're asking about and they actually uh, my client owns the the, re the remainder of the five acre track there's an existing residence on it that's going to remain okay. yes ma'am <coughs> Again, we have a discussion only discussion of request to amend the Farragut Municipal Code, Title IX, Chapter 4, sign ordinance to allow abandoned, abandoned signs to remain. Jeffrey Fields, applicant. Now, this has been discussed fairly extensively at the Visual Resources Review Board, and what I included in your packets was a copy of the application and then also the recommendation, recommendation from the Visual Resources Review Board. Currently in our sign ordinance, we consider a sign um, to be abandoned after 30 days. And I included um, in your packet the definition of an abandoned sign. It is a sign which identifies or advertises a business, lessor, owner, product, or activity that has been discontinued for 30 days or more. 
Mr. Fields owns the center that backs up to the post office there that fronts on Kingston Pike. And he has recently changed all of the signs or had his <coughs> tenants change all of the signs to the panel signs. And he was requesting that um, the panel signs, if you have a chain and change in tenant, that they could just leave the panel up there um, and the frame up there and everything uh, for an indefinite period of time. And uh, staff does not support that request and neither did the Visual Resources Review Board for several reasons. Um, one of the reasons was we do not want to treat one style of sign differently than other styles of signs. Um, it is not a judgment call on or value judgment on you know what design size design is better than another. It's just that there should be equitable treatment with regards to what is considered to be an abandoned sign. The other issue is that equitable treatment equates directly into financial. From the standpoint, it's always part of the cost of removing a sign and, at, and you know putting up a new sign. One one area should not be treated differently than another area. The other one is that the proposed change would encourage that type of st style versus maybe a different type of style. And it also assumes that there is no difference in tenant spaces. And if you ever have paid attention to shopping centers as tenant changes, their sizes actually vary as they change out and you get different ones coming in. Um, but probably the biggest reason for the center itself is you have a look of abandonment if you have a, if you have a bunch of empty sign panels um, which affects the aesthetics of the center um, and it could affect the economics of the center which we really which we really aren't supportive of the visual resources review board agreed with staff on this and but felt that maybe the best compromise to the request is to change the definition of abandoned sign from 30 days to 90 days. Um, there is the issue with, you know, you pull in and you think you're going into a business and it's not there anymore. And people can get frustrated. Um, but this was the compromise that the VRB uh, came up with. Uh, we definitely support the VRB's compromise recommendation of which I understand the applicant also was not 100% thrilled but was better with that than nothing, um, that this may be a, a good compromise. And it's for the Planning Commission now to decide as to whether that is what you would, you know, would, what you would recommend going to the Board of Mayor and Aldermen. Activity. Does that mean like all of the election signs and everything that people know? What? So that like if all, I okay, own a business and I and I and I um I move my business for example. I understand now. I just when that, I read that I read did that include those? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. That you for thirty days and when you said ninety, I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> that they get to no. keep all of that stuff up for ninety days. Like I said, the 90 days is a good compromise for the request in that respect, but you really don't want to have abandoned signs out for extended periods of time. All those signs have uh, have tenants. Are are I mean they're brand new, and they are for existing tenants. Other question is how long are those temporary signs?